Praise God. I still feel the power of God. I'm telling you. Feels good, don't it? You start praising God and worshiping God. Woo. How great thou art. I had that song on my heart the last day or two. <laughs> How great thou art. He's a wonderful, great God. Praise God. You know, looked at some of the word and took some of this down years ago and it kind of jumped out at me when I was going through my Bible in the front of it I some of the things I write that's happened that God spoke to me and done over the years going to Dominican Republic and his confirmation and all of that you know sometimes I go back and refresh myself of what God did for me he saved me set me free and delivered me and I just, you know, I, I just love it. And, and I go back and I look at some of the things he did. It refreshes me and gives me the power and strength I need to go forward. Amen. Remember, the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. A lot of the world is going down that broad and destructive road, y'all. But our Lord Jesus Christ came to give life and give it more abundantly. I want abundant life, don't you? And I don't want to be beat around by no devil. But sometimes it gets rough, don't it? It does. But you got to stand your ground, amen? you got to stand. And I love that verse that says in James, it's, uh, uh, you know, submit to the Lord thy God and resist the devil and he'll free from you. And all that's around you. Rebuke him, demons of hell. Get them out of there. They got to obey God. Did you know this? They got to obey us because we have Jesus in us. And we got to claim our authority. Sometimes it's hard. You're getting pounded or something going on, you know, and you just say, hey, enough is enough. And, and, and bust him in the mouth. <laughs> Let's look and see. Uh, I want to talk about my message is called Tell It. But I want to talk about saying it. And tonight I want to talk about doing it. And tonight I want to talk about receive it. And tonight I want to talk about tell it. Amen. So let's look, we're going to look at some scriptures and put this together, okay? They're awesome scriptures, by the way. We're, talking, we're going to talk about a woman that had an issue of blood. And she spent all of her money and everything with it. And she could not get healed. But you know what she said? She said it. If I touch the hem of his garment, <laughs> oh, if I touch the hem of his garment, she had that kind of faith. She had heard about Jesus healing the blind man setting the cri I mean the clipper man walks and healing the blind man and the leopards and all that. Here comes Jesus in the crowd. She had to fight her way through that crowd. And she said, If I just touch the hem of the gar gar of his of his garment, I'll be healed. She had that kind of faith. But she said it. Sometimes you and I have to say it, don't we? Sometimes God said this, and I'm going to say it. God, you said uh, you heal by your stripes, and I claim it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You got to say it. God said he'd heal me. Say it. Let's look right here. See what the Word says. It's the most powerful. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, and this thing, she spent everything she had trying to get healed, and she could not get healed. The, the physicians and doctors could not heal her. And she had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. But let me tell you what happened, y'all. The great physician of all time come walking through neighborhood amen and the word had been going out that this Galilean 
have been healing people, setting them free, casting out demons, doing those works that need to be done. And uh, the woman have an issue of blood 12 years, which had she had spent all of her living upon uh, physicians, neither could be healed of any. Thank you. You'll be blessed for that. Who gave me that? Cameron gave me that, did he? They came behind him and touched the border of his garment. You know, God's almighty. He's God, ain't he? And he knew when somebody touched the, his garment that virtue had went out of him. And he knew that because he had discernment, y'all. He had all the gifts of the Spirit. Pray that we can all get the nine gifts of the Spirit to glorify and magnify God and to do his work that it will glorify God, not self. We keep our pride down. Amen. Look right here came behind him and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stanched. Now I want to tell you something. We serve awesome God, don't we? And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitudes throng thee and press thee and saith thou who touched me? You see, he was in a crowd of people, man, and he was the, the disciples was probably there trying to push their way through because all of them heard about Jesus. He had just come off the boat, I think, and come down. All of them heard about Jesus. And Jesus probably went through the village and started screaming and hollering, It's Jesus, he's here. And probably the whole village and everybody started coming down there and they, they just surrounded him. Think about it. That's who we're talking about. The great physician. Amen. And uh, Jesus said, somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was uh, not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. That's a form of worship, worship to our Lord right there. Y'all know that. She knew. She knew immediately she was healed, I guarantee you. Look at here. She declared unto him before all people for, for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Ooh, is that good? How many ever here in here have been healed immediately by God? I have. But then sometimes it's been, I have had slow boat. <laughs> I like immediately best, don't you? We got that uh, hamburger joint syndrome, ain't we? We want it quick. If you don't give it quick, where's the manager? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm telling you, but we love the Lord. It is an uh, awesome thing when you pray to God and it happens immediately. It really is. I've had it happen, you know. And I've got certain things that I still pray about and, in God's, it's in God's timing. I, timing. I still put it with Him. Amen. I still put it in Him. Look at right here. Immediately she was healed, and He said unto her daughter, "Be of good comfort, for thy faith that made thee whole. Go in peace." Did that woman have faith? She said, "If I can touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I, I'll be healed." Amen. Well, sometimes we need to get in our prayer clause and say, "God, I got to touch your garment." Amen. I, I remember. I don't know why some people get healed and some don't. I don't know that yet, but I know just about everybody in here's probably been healed at one time by God. So it was in God's timing time that He healed you, wouldn't it? I, I remember one time when I was in the Dominican Republic. Now listen to this and. I don't understand some of it all, but I know God's on the throne and I'm going to serve him regardless. Amen? I remember one time I was in Dominican Republic and it was getting late that evening. We were fixing to go out and I was going to preach at a church. All of us usually had a go, go preach at a church or something, you know, and the ladies would go to churches and preach and I would go to a church and preach. We all had services usually at night especially. And during the day we'd have some sometimes, you know. But I won't never forget I was in my room and I had prepared my Bible. And you better be 
prayed up and booked up because a lot of times the lights go out and you don't get to read your scripture. You better have it in your heart and ready to pull it out there, you know. But anyway, I was fixing to go, and sometimes you do have the light and the power won't go off. This is the early times it went off a lot, but as the last few years it's gotten better, you know. But anyway, I, I doubt if they'll let you charge in electric cars down there. That's my that's my opinion. Anyway, anyway, I better get off of that. Anyway, listen to this. So I was in there, and I said, uh, uh, I grabbed my Bible, and I had, you know, my, my, my shirt, and I was ready to go uh, preach that night, you know, and I started walking out the door, y'all. And you know what the Holy Ghost said to me? Something very important. Get your glasses. And I said, well, Lord, thank you for reminding me that. But, God, you can heal me. I don't have to have them glasses. But I got my glasses done. I obeyed him. You know, I, if I hadn't got them, I, I couldn't have seen the stuff, you know, especially in a dim thing. And I, and I don't understand why God heals in different ways sometimes. He has given us uh eye doctors that can help us and everything you know and there are some things uh, that god will just heal immediately amen he, he, he just that kind of god i remember one time when i was had pneumonia and i was at my house and i was dying nobody uh, could help me and i couldn't breathe i had gone in a, a big corporate type meeting in um uh, down the lower part of the state and i got sick down there and i didn't feel good and it come on strong and i come home and i was at home and i couldn't and, and i was sitting on the couch about i couldn't go to bed because i couldn't lay down and breathe and i had pneumonia and i i was uh, uh really getting bad and i got up to go to the restroom and and it took all the air from me and i i said i'm dying i had asthma you know anyway i said i'm dying and so I leaned up against a, a cabinet, and I said, "Well, I'm going." I said, "Lord, you're going to let me die right here?" I said, "God, I'm I'm dying. Are you going to touch me?" You know what the Lord said? Drive yourself to the hospital. Now God told me that, y'all, and I said, "Well, Lord, why can't you just heal me?" Man, I couldn't even. I staggered out to my car. This is no joke. And the hospital was only about 10 minutes from where I was living at the time. And I drove there and slung open my door, and they had to get me in a, I tried to stagger in there. That's how I, I was nowhere. They got me in a wheelchair and took me back. And uh, they gave me a breathing treatment and all that, and they got me revived up. But I asked the Lord standing, and I said, Lord, are you going to let me die? I did. And he said, drive yourself to the hospital. Why didn't he heal me? We got doctors, ain't we? I don't know. But uh, I have done things, and God has immediately healed me. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, he healed me years ago of a cancer, and it's gone. And I know uh, and the next day I passed it through my bowels, and I know that that he healed my ulcers, and I ate pizza that night. Y'all remember me talking about that? It was immediately but, you know, I've been into other areas I don't know yet. But uh, what I'm telling you, we serve an awesome God, don't we? And he tells us what to do and how to do it. Sometimes he protects over us and shows us, uh, you know, what to do and everything. So, but those two incidents, me and the Lord has still has a, I say, Lord, you could heal my eyes. Why don't you tell me to get my glasses? Why don't you say, I'm going to heal your eyes so you don't have to get your glasses? <laughs> but the Lord didn't want it to. He said, get your glasses. And I'd have forgot them. I couldn't have, well, I couldn't have seen nothing. You know, I, I have to have them right here. But I don't have to have them nowhere else. You know, I give God the praise for that too. But that's just some little incidents I don't know, you know. But I know he does heal. I know I've got writings in my book where he's healed me. I know he heals. He healed me of a broken heart one time, and it was it was broke. And he healed me beyond a shadow of a doubt. And he said in his word in Psalms 103, he heals the brokenhearted. Amen? He does. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Amen? Uh, let's go a little bit further right here and look. I'm trying to give you some examples, you know, of certain situations. But this lady, 
She said it. She said, if I can touch a hem of his garden, I'll be healed. Amen. So sometimes we got to have stronger faith than, than, than uh, we got. We might ask God, Lord, give me the faith that I need to get through this or do this. Amen. And I, I, his disciples, some of them prayed what? Lord, <clears throat> help my unbelief. Amen. Y'all remember I just did praise and worship. <laughs> you know what I mean? had times <clears throat> where I've had asked God to <coughs> help me with my unbelief. <coughs> Amen. You ever had it? Amen. All of us have just about, ain't we? But uh, I've had times, if his disciples ask for it, I know uh, one of his servants, as uh, Ricky Bagwell, can ask for it too. Amen. And I have had God to give me the faith to move mountains that's been in my life. Amen. So sometimes we have to what? Say it and, uh, and move on it. Let's look right here and see what the lady said in Mark 5, 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind him and touched his garment. For she said, what she's do? Did she say it? For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. That the word, y'all see that? Is that awesome or what? If I touch his clothes, I shall be whole. So she said it. She said, y'all see that? Say it. Sometimes you got to say it, Lord. If I just get in my prayer closet with you, you're going to heal me in Jesus' name. I speak the word. And, Lord, I speak the word. I thank you in advance that you're going to heal me. I'm going to say it. God, you're going to heal me. I thank you in advance that you're touching my body and taking the pain out. Amen. we got to say it. we got to get riled up sometime. Now let's look at this next one. It said, I'm going to do it. Man, this next dude was in a bad way, man. He's in a pig pen. But he said, I'm going to do it. He was out there running around in a pig pen, didn't have nothing, used to have all kind of things. He blowed it on uh, 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 bad, uh, sinful living. He, he took his father's inheritance, and he blew it uh, out there. And after he blew it out there, you know, these people I don't understand, and he blew all of it, and, it, and times got hard in the, uh, uh, in the land and all of that stuff, and he found himself working in a pig pen, and he was starving to death, and uh, he, he was eating the husk that the pigs was eating. So you know what he said? I'm going to do it. Let's look and see what he said. I'm talking about the prodigal son here. And we can't, when he came to himself, man, he had had enough. He come to himself. In other words, he went out there and lived all that flamboyant living, blowed all of that money and everything, and he finally come to his senses. And he said, you know what he said? He said, I'm going to do it. He, and what's he going to do? He's going to go back to his father. These people out there uh, today and in, on the Internet that's been uh, uh, traveling and left the Lord thy God, and they need to do it. They need to come back to the Father. Amen? Amen. Think about that. Look at here. And when it came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? He's in a bad way. He got, you know, sometimes God has to get you right on your back so you can look up. Amen? Think about it. But I'll tell you right now, he's a wonderful God, and he loves us. And uh, when you down there and look up and you give it all to him, something's going to happen, ain't it? Amen? i tell you right now, sometimes God's had to get your heart just right, don't he? Sometimes, you know, you just ain't where you need to be, and he might bust you in the head with a two-by-four, but he used a four-by-four four on me. But I got the message. <laughs> Amen? Dennis was laughing over it. He must have been in that experience, too. <laughs> Let's look right here, y'all. Look here. And I will arise and go. What did he say I'm going, he's going to do? What's he going to do? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned. See, he had that broken heart, 
humbling this there, didn't he? And his father heard him. Did you know you and I, uh, when we backslide on God and get in a position that we don't need to be, we can come with a brokenness to God and say, Lord, I've sinned, forgive me. Forgive me. Look right here. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. So he knew he had sinned. He come to that point that, hey, I've been I've been sinning, and I need to go back to my Father. Amen. Think about us. Uh, sometimes we've been out there maybe backslidden in our walk with the Lord, and we come to that point and say, hey, I want to get back to my God. I ask God, that would you forgive me for what I've done, and will you help me, Lord Jesus, because, Lord, I love you in my heart. God, please forgive me. And when you get to that point, guess what? We have a merciful God. You know, you can cry out to God all you want to. If you're lost and living like hell out there, he ain't going to heal you. But if you start saying, Lord, have mercy on me, forgive me a sinner and help me, he'll hear you. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and uh, am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Did he humble himself down? He did, didn't he? He said, I know I've done messed up. Make me one of the servants. Just, just let me come back to you, God, uh, his father. But we can use that as our Lord. You know, you get a, away from the Lord, and you can come back to the Lord. And and uh, he'll, he's got open arms there for you. Amen? Look at right here. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And uh, look right here. And he arose. He, he said, I'm going to do it. I'm going back to my father. All this drought and stuff is going on in the land. I'm going back to my father's place. He got something to eat up there. It's going to be good. Amen. Even if I'm a, some, a servant. Look here. And he arose and he came to his father. But when he was a, a great way off, his father saw him. And he had compassion. And he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. You know, that's the way daddies are, ain't it? They love their children, don't they? Amen? Think about that. That's where our Heavenly Father is. When that lost soul, he left the 99 and went and got the one and come back, they all rejoiced. Amen? He wasn't worried about the 99. They were saved. But the one that was lost is the one he was happy about. He went and got and brought. Amen? Look at here. And Father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Boy, that wasn't a resentful, mean daddy, was it? And his daddy loved him so much, he gave him half of the inheritance that he was going to get and gave it to him, and knowing that young and went out there and blowed every bit of it. But now his brother stayed there and was a hard worker and done all them things. He was going to get his half when his daddy died. It was his. But he got jealous of what was going on there. Hey, I've been working all this time, and you go get a fatty calf and kill it, put a ring on the boy, and put a robe on him, shoes on his feet. And I've been working for you all of this time, daddy. So he had a little problem too, didn't he? Look right here. But you can understand where the flesh would get in there like that, can't you? You can. Think about it. Look here. The word said, and he arose and he came to his father, but when he was yet great way off, his father uh, saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. See, he humbled himself, didn't he? He got it. He, he, he got it. But the father said unto his, uh, his uh, servants, bring from forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet <clears throat> man he was showing all the servants that was his daddy had that this is my son y'all see that he still loved his son and he wanted to, uh, his servants and he went, didn't want his son to be a servant that's his son and the son had the ring and the robe and the shoes on his feet he was recognized as the heir amen Think about it. Look here. On his hand and on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. I like that, don't you? For this is my son. He was dead. Just think of our brothers and sisters out there dead and they run off from the Lord. Maybe they used to love the Lord, but they dead. But look here. For my son was dead 
and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they begin to be merry. That's something to be merry about, ain't it? Think about that, y'all. Hopefully we'll minister to some people on that uh, street uh, Saturday that uh, that have backslidden and want to get back right with the Lord. And God is a God that can set them totally free from alcohol, heroin, whatever it might be, but they got to want it. Let's go a little bit further. Now we see that the woman said it, and she got uh, her healing. And we see that the prodigal son, he did it, said, I'm going to do it, and he done it, didn't he? Now we're going to look at this other one to receive it. Boy, this other dude here, y'all might know him in 1 Samuel. Let's look and see in 17, 34, 30. And David, anybody know who I'm talking about here? And David said unto Saul, thy servant, keep his father's sheep. They came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. Now David is kind of uh, uh, telling old Saul here, listen, I'll go out there and kill that uncircumcised Philistine. I ain't afraid of him. I killed a lion and a bear, and I know that God helped me to kill a bear and a lion. And I know that my God, I received, he's God Almighty, and he'll help me kill that uncircumcised Philistine. Look, look. And uh, I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when uh, he arose against me, I caught him by his beard. That's a, that's a lion, y'all. He caught him by the beard. I got that dude. Them, them things weigh about 500 pounds. They pretty bad dudes, you know. Look right here. I want to meet David. I can't wait. To, I want to wait. He, he was a dude. Now look at here. <coughs> Amen. He went out <coughs> after him, and he smoked him and delivered him out of his mouth. And he arose against me. I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. He's given old Saul a little bit of reference of some of the things he's been against, and God's helped him uh, successfully uh, beat uh, those things out. He said, I'll kick that Philistine off down there. He's uh, coming against God's uh, 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 Israel, and I, ain't, I don't like it. He's mocking and, and cursing our God. Look at here. Uh, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and the uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. Man, that David broke in there speaking some authority, didn't he? He come out of the wilderness where he was a shepherd boy attending to the flock, and he talked to God a lot. And he killed a lion and a bear. And he come up there, and all these Israelites was scared and afraid to go out there against this 13-foot dude. His armor weighed 279 pounds. He had a bunch of toes and fingers and a spear, and his armor man carried his old shield up there. And he laughed and called David a little dog out there, a dog said, why y'all send this? And though David, he didn't back up. You know what David did? He done picked up him five smooth stones, baby. And when that Philistine started, I got five stones I picked up in Dominican Republic. I got them because of that, out of the river of Dominican Republic. They're up there in my office, you won't see them. I want to tell you something. David's an awesome. He had to slay five giants. Did y'all know that? Anyway, I'll tell you this. When that Philistine started cursing God Almighty and David's God, and David, he didn't back up, man. He run to the fight, baby. And he done slipped in his hand, and he done put that sling there, and he started flinging that sling, and he threw that baby, and it popped that giant right between the eyes and sunk in his head. And that big 13-foot dude hit the dirt. Well, you know what David needed then? He needed a sword. So he took the enemy's sword, weighed a lot, and he cut that joker's head up, and he picked that head up. Got a picture back there. I think Betty brought in, hung him back there. He picked that head up, and he showed it like that. And you know what he said to them Philistines? Nanu, nanu. <laughs> and you know what they said? We out of here, baby. I put a little humor in it, but hey. That was a brave, awesome thing that King David done. He cut his head off with his own sword. He picked that head up, and he showed it to them Philistines that were cursing uh, uh, God to Israel. And, man, they hit the road, baby. We need more Davids in this world, don't we? And Elishas and Elijahs. Amen.
I'm telling y'all, we have to fight big giants. We got the power to do it. Did David have the power to do it? He already knew that God helped him uh, uh, kill a lion. He helped him uh, kill a, uh, 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 what was the other? <laughs> a, a bear and a lion, yeah. He helped him kill a bear and a lion. I want to tell you something. Them two big dudes. And he knew from experience that God helped me do that. And he went back and he remembered and he told Saul what he'd done. Amen. And he just gave him a little good reference for the job that he was fixing to do. And you know what gets me about David? I know he, he, he put on the first thing they did is they put on Saul's armor on him and weighed him down. He was a young, lean little old dude, you know. They put all that armor. He said, this ain't proven by me. And he throwed it off. He said, you know what he said? I can see him now. I'm going to do it my way, baby. God's going to be with me. And I ain't taking no armor, no sword. You, you don't go up there and fight no giant with no little old bitty sword. And he got a 279 pounds worth of armor. It's a little bitty outnumbered, ain't it? But where the giant messed up, uh, he went against the giant of all giants. Uh, little David uh, had God Almighty fighting for him. Amen. And when a little David had run across that creek and popped him in the head with that sling, ooh, I, man, you talk about a shot. That was the shot of all time. Mm, mm, pow. I used to play with a sling when I was a kid. Wasn't that good, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Think about it. Man, he popped him in that head. It sunk in his head, and he hit the dirt. Can you imagine the, all of his armor and that big dude, 13 foot he was? Oh, I can see it now. No David run over and jumped up on his chest or his back. And you know what victory the kings would do when they conquered kings, they put their neck on the, their foot on the back of their neck and kill them. Usually, they, he stepped up there and he grabbed that sword and whoop. In other words, that dude wasn't going to regain consciousness. You can see what I mean? But what did he do? He received the help from the Lord. He went out there and fought that giant, didn't he? Amen. We have giants in our lives, uh, y'all. We all do. And David had to fight five giants. He had some valor men that helped him on some of them. But I'm here to tell you right now, God is with us. We can go across the creek and fight the Philistines too. God is with us. Amen. And if we stand up for the Lord thy God the way we spoke to, he will be with us and he'll help fight our battles. The battle's not mine, said little David. Amen. That's a good song. Lord, it's thine, I'm in your favor. The battle's not mine. Y'all remember, give it to him, y'all. Let's look right here. And the word said, and David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistines. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with you. Oh, Saul, after he was big and telling him all his credentials, he said, go on, man, you got the Lord We hit it. Look at here. God's an awesome God, isn't he? Then David said to the Philistines, uh, Cometh me with a sword, but with a spear and a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Now think about that, buddy. The people of the land know that Israel has a God that fights for them, y'all. Think about that. Look right here. This day will the Lord deliver me into the hand, and I will smite thee and take thee, thy hand from thee, thy head from thee. See, I already talking about what he's going. I'm going to take the head from thee, and I will give the the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day the fowls of the air and to the beast of the earth. All the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Think about it, y'all. Ooh, that's good. That's good. And uh, and uh, this ascent and. Uh, and all this assemble shall know that the Lord saveth us, saveth not with a sword and a spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands. Amen. Y'all see that? See, he spoke, he was speaking them words, didn't he? He's going to give you into my hands. Look at it. And it came to pass that the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, and David hastened. What did he say? David hastened and ran towards the army to meet the Philistines. 
Man, he's going and facing the whole Philistine army. He's running towards them. Look here. And David put his hand in the bag and took thence a stone and slang it, and it smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and fell upon his face to the earth. So he fell on his face to the earth, and he stood on his back and his neck and all that, and he cut that head off, baby. Look here. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. What's he going to do? Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and he drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead... They fled. <clears throat> Amen. We see the woman said it, and she got healed. And the prodigal son, he said, I'm going to do it. And he went back to his father. Amen. And he got uh, uh, the, the son was there again. And we see that David said he received what God had done from him. He's going to stand out there and, and, and stomp that Philistine. Now, all of these things, let's look at the next thing. You go tell it. God ever done something awesome from you and everything, and you got a, a great testimony to tell, you need to tell it, y'all. That family needs to be bold and say, God saved me. I know he did, and he took me from uh, where I was at and where I'm at today. You know, that, that song that Betty sings I really like, look behind you and look how far you come, something like that. Well, uh, yeah, didn't I walk on the water and, and uh, leave all of heaven to die for your sins. I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. That's how much he loves us. Amen. Look here, y'all. Let's look at this next one. Y'all might be real familiar with this. Romans 10, 9, 10, If thou shalt confess with the mouth. There's a little something to that. you got to speak it, ain't you? That woman had to say it. She, she, What did that do when she said it, if I touch a human's garden? What did it do? Gave her faith, didn't it? Gave her faith. Amen. Let's look right here and look. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Is that what the Word of God says? We believe it. Everybody here tonight believes that, don't we? Everybody here tonight had to go to that verse right there, one of them, John 3, 16 or whatever, and confess and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I repent. Save me. And he saved. Look here. And the word of God says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made as salvation. Say it, do it, receive it, and tell it with the mouth. Okay? Look right here. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I want to tell you all something. I'm going to read this last verse and we'll go. One time I was living in the world again after I tried to live Christian life, and I was back in the world again. And I had this man from a Baptist church down the street, about three streets down, and knocked on my door one night. Late in the evening. He said, Mr., could I talk to you a little bit about Jesus? I was tired, come on work, and I stood there and talked to him. I told him I had been saved. He said, "You just all you got to do is repent and ask God to come back in your heart. Or get, or maybe I, I can't remember. Maybe he said I get, I get saved. Yeah, he said get saved. That's what it was. He said uh, you know what the Bible says? Do you believe what the Bible says? If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in his heart, thou shalt be saved. Is that what the Bible says? Not what I say. He showed me. He said, see what the Bible says. It ain't what I say. It's what the Bible says. If you confess with your mouth, so I confessed. After he sat there a little while and talked to me about Jesus, I got saved. Three days I went back to work. For three days, all the people in my work, all the people in the restaurants, everybody got around me. Man, I got saved, y'all. I'm saved. The lady come to the table to take our order. I got saved. I'm saved three days ago. I got, I'm saved. For three days I walked around and told people I was saved. Now, I know I got saved then because God's Word said it, and I, and I looked at it, and I believed it. But now it's still, I still wasn't where I needed to be. But God was working on me, y'all. And, you know, I went through some other trials and tribulations. Then I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I needed that power. I needed the power. 
I couldn't maintain as a Baptist boy, to be honest with you. But, man, when I got that power, it's on. The Baptist boy was gone. The Pentecostal boy rose up by the power of God. And I give him the glory. Amen. He radically changed my life and gave me a power. I was endued with power from on high, just like you. Amen. So I started fighting the enemy then. The war was really on then. I want to be like King David. I want to cut some giant's heads off, don't y'all? Amen. Let's look at this last verse right here. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, is that what this preacher said or what God said? Amen. This is what God said, y'all. This is truth from the front to the back. And God said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you want to be saved, you can be saved. Many of us in here, most of us in here tonight are saved, or you wouldn't be here. This is the core of the church comes on Wednesday night. It starts Sunday, and it's powerful. Sunday night, it gets a little thinner. Wednesday night, so, so, you know. But praise God for everybody that comes. You know why you're here? Because you love God. Amen? God loves you, and you're getting the word. Amen? So, let me read that again. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tell it. Tell it on, go tell it on the mountain. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain. Look at here. You folks on the internet, every head bow. Thank you for being with us. We love you so much. And we pray God just touched you tonight. And we pray you got this service. Uh, say it, do it, receive it, and tell it. If God saves you, go tell somebody what God's done for you. Your witness has a powerful thing. You might get somebody saved by telling them your testimony. Lord, I pray you touch each and every one in here tonight in a special way. Thank you for everyone that's been here. I pray you touch Jack's uh, back and that pain's going away from him. And uh, Marie, Lord, I pray you heal her body. And Lord, I pray uh, for Sue's foot. I pray, God, that you move uh, on their behalf in a mighty way, Lord. Touch Donnie. Give him strength. And Ronnie, we love you, Lord. Just go with us now. Let us come back and let us... Uh, be able to glorify and magnify you in your holy house. And everybody said amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you.